one of the things that I love about working in the box is that when it comes to recalling mixes in a DAW, you open up a session and it recalls exactly as you've left off. Now, that being said, I also love getting my hands on a hardware EQ or a compressor and not paying any attention to a GUI and just turning things in the context of the mix and getting something to sound right. Over the last year or so, I've actually incorporated quite a bit of hardware into my setup. So in this particular mix, this is a mix we've just got sign off. Uh, this is the first of 10 tracks that we're doing. And what I need to do now, I need to do two things. First of all, I need to print a version of my mix that doesn't have a limiter. So kind of like a pre-master, whatever I'm gonna send out to mastering, or in this case, I'm mastering this myself. And also, because I'm using hardware, I want to be able to archive this. Now, my thoughts about using hardware, they're kind of 50-50. So if, for example, we take a look at Pipeline, Pipeline is a really awesome plugin in that it allows you to make detailed notes and on specific hardware where you can dial in exact settings, like you have stepped pots or something, this should give you as close to a hardware recall as possible um, in terms of it being accurate. But in other cases, we also have the ability to, where is it here? Whoops, we can take a look at a picture. We can upload pictures directly within here. Um, but for some cases, for example, if I'm using my ADL 700, those EQ knobs, they don't have stepped pots or anything. And they're kind of, they're not finicky. They're just, they have a really fine resolution. So I don't wanna have to make super detailed notes. And by the time I do the next mix, I wanna use the gear again. So in these cases, once I've got sign off on the mix, I want to be able to archive or print any processing that I'm doing using outboard gear. So this video is all about kind of developing a workflow. Now, in certain cases, I might actually try to use the hardware at the beginning stages, and then I may back up my original uh, audio region or audio event on a separate layer and deactivate that plugin. I've done some videos of, uh, like that in the past, but in other cases, I'm very much just kind of going through and trying different things, and this would be a great example. If we take a look at the Cajon track over here, this is a, it's a stereo file, but I've made this track mono. I'm just gonna suspend my groups for a quick moment. Notice that I'm using plugins and I'm using a piece of hardware in the middle and then I have another uh, plugin at the very end over here. So because I want to use this gear again, I'm also using, there's event gain here, there's clip gain and there's input trim. So I want to just be able to render this down so that I can recall this mix if I need to later on. Now, two elements, which I kind of don't worry about, and they're actually sitting on bus channels in Studio One, is if we take a look at our guitar group over here, again, I have stepped settings on my ADL 600, and I like to use this in line mode, and I will run either groups of tracks, so a, a bus channel, a group of tracks. Sometimes I will even put this on my mix bus if I need to do some processing. Let's have a really quick listen to how the guitars sound over here. Let's solo these out. These are going through some reverb as well, but we'll have a quick listen. This is the ADL 600 on the guitars. So it's very subtle, but it definitely makes a difference for me. Now in these cases, for something like this and also for something like my mix bus, Generally speaking, I like to use settings that are very easy to recall. So notice for my threshold and my makeup gain, I've set these to areas that I can recall within like 99%. It's very easy for me to perfectly dial in nine o'clock on a knob. And these settings are all stepped. The high pass filter at 105 Hertz, uh, the transformers being on, the attack, the ratio release. Those are all things I can recall. So I'm not as worried about that. That being said, what I also do is in case I ever needed to recall this and I didn't have access to my hardware, maybe I was in a mobile setup or something, what I also do is I'll bring in an instance of something. In this case, I'm using the Fat Channel SSL emulation. I've actually dialed in the exact same. It's hard to see, but if I dial up this parameter, let me activate this for a moment. If I click this, you'll see that I've dialed it in actually at 105 hertz as well. And I've matched this just visually. I'm tickling the needle into about 2 dBs, and I'm doing about 2 dBs of makeup gain on this. Now, this won't have the Cinemag transformers, but it'll be close in terms of the dynamic control that I'm getting if I ever needed to recall this. But for now, let's turn this off. 
Now in other cases, let's take a look at our vocals, for example. On our vocals, we have a mix between plugins and hardware. I'm using a WA76, which is a Warm Audio 1176, and then I'm also using a Warm Audio uh, EQPWA, which is their Pultec emulation. In these cases, I have made detailed notes, and it's very easy for me to be able to um, dial in anything that I need to dial in, I can match these. And I always like to use numbers that are like 4.5 or 5.5 or 1.5. So I can kind of put the dial in between the numbers. It's easy for me to recall. But in this case, what I want to do is anything that's using hardware, bus channels or actual audio channels, I want to print these and be able to archive them. And then my second step, of course, is once I've archived that, I also need to print my mix that doesn't have a limiter on it so that I can go off to mastering. So there's a couple different ways that we can work. If we take a look at, for example, our Cajon track, and this is soloed out, uh, it's going to mix bus and it's got a mix between plugins and pipeline. If I right click this event, and we go to event, we have the option to bounce to new track. Now what this will do is it will bounce and it will apply the effects chain. It'll also apply any uh, automation, any input trim levels, any event gain levels. And it will basically bring in a new track at the same stereo, uh, width, either mono or stereo. And I'm about 98% sure that it will also respect my uh, routing if this is going to a separate bus. So that's one way that we could do this. And then it will create a track. The track will have the same name. Uh, it'll put it in the bounces folder versus the media folder. But the way that I like to do this, because I like to do it all in one step, is I will basically go through all of my tracks and find what it is that I need to back up or what I want to make a print of. And then I'm just basically using the new tracks option and I'm creating either stereo or mono tracks. I name them the exact same name as what I'm printing and then I just append the word print to it. Now on the input side, we can choose between buses, instruments, outputs, and tracks. So for this case, I'm using the all guitars, but if we scroll down to, where is it here? The Cajon. Over here, the print track that I've set up for the Cajon, notice that I'm using the tracks option and I've actually selected the Cajon as the input. And again, I've manually set the outputs to be mix bus so that they're automatically routed properly. Now I've also just given these a plain white color so that I know that they are basically archived print tracks that are printing any hardware processing that I was using. So I don't have to worry about any gear recalls. As long as the mix is signed off, even if I need to make a small tweak, like bring the vocals up or down, or I need to do some EQ, that's perfectly fine. I'm not worried about that. So once I've created a print track for all of these elements, and like I said, in most cases, I wouldn't do a bus channel, but just in case I'm going to uh, print a bus channel, and I'm gonna do them in one pass as well. So we've got our cajon, we've got our guitars, which is a submix, as we know. Um, we have our lead vocals, which is, once again, uh, I have my vocals. There are two tracks in these vocals. They're both going to a bus. I made the bus mono, and then they're packed into a folder. But my vocal print track, my lead vocal print, I'm using, again, buses, and this is set to lead vox. And that's the mono bus that I'm printing from here. Um, and last but not least, I think that's probably it. So the only thing we have to do now at this point is let's just disable our solo over here. I'm going to record enable all of these white tracks, all of these print tracks that I've set up, named, set up the routing. I'm just going to record enable all of them. So we should have, what is it here? We have three tracks in total that we're printing or is it four? One, two, three. Oh, we also need to do our bass. I must have accidentally hidden that because I was pretty sure that I created one. Ah, here it is. Yes, it was hiding for some reason. Again, same thing here. This is a channel over here. Um, this bass track, I'm using my uh, WA-2A, again, a warm audios emulation of, uh, or hardware clone of an LA-2A. Again, just want to record enable that. Now, Two quick points, rather three quick points, and then we'll, we will get going here. The first thing I like to do is I want to select the full duration, and I, I like my prints to happen right at bar one. So I've got these audio prints. If you disable snapping, you select an event, and we use Shift-P, it will automatically set your loop 
range to the exact duration and size of the audio. So I want the recording to start right at bar one at the very beginning so that uh, I never have to worry about are these in time or anything like that. One last thing that I like to do, uh, which just makes things a little bit more organized is while we have a loop range selected and it's deactivated, so the loop range is not active, um, what we can do is if you choose auto punch, then the actual recording will only take place during the duration of the loop range that you've selected. And our last step is I want to make sure that monitoring mutes playback tape style is disabled. So essentially what this is doing when the tracks are only record armed or record enabled is it's pretty much disabling software monitoring. If you have this enabled, you will hear a double signal. We don't want that. We want to be able to let this mix print as it goes and we also want to be able to listen to it and monitor it. Okay, uh, generally speaking, I don't enable takes to layers when I do this. I just want these to happen on one clean track. And with this cycle range selected, we can just go ahead and engage our transport into record mode. Okay, so there is our guitar print that's happening. Here will be our bass print, and we also have a cajon. So you can see everything is starting to run through. Maybe we'll do a bit of a data zoom so we can see the waveforms a little more clearly. And I'm just going to let this run through and I will catch you at the very end of the video. Okay, perfect. So we're just coming up to the end of the print and watch as it passes the loop range. These tracks or these events will automatically uh, stop recording. So they're the exact right duration. Now, uh, we will just do option or alt and click one of these tracks to take everything out of the record arm state. And if I was to disable this reverb and we'll just play from here, I'm gonna solo this out. So you can see that it's the same. And also with respect to these being uh, mono tracks, like for example, the bass and the vocal and things like that, um, I've done some testing on this in the past and the pan law doesn't seem to affect things. So if it's directly routed to a track, you don't have to worry about any minus three things or anything like that. Um, for my testing, everything works as expected. So now that we have all of these archived, like I said, I don't necessarily need to have them in the mix, but they are in the mix and they're routed if we need to use them. So at this point, just for archiving purposes, I could either deactivate these or simply just mute these. But now I kind of have that peace of mind uh, in terms of knowing that I have consolidated files that are printed um, and I can go ahead and just use my hardware as I need to for any subsequent mixes that I'm working with. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.